Welcome to Headline News 24/7. Please click like and subscribe. Sanders just sent out urgent morning message after what she caught at White House. Dash, I was one of the lucky ones. The Trump administration is known for appealing to every American, ready, willing, and able to do the hard work needed to bring this country back together and do right by the American people, whether it is through policy or small acts of kindness. Which is why Secretary of Defense James Mattis's recent actions won't surprise you, and in fact warm your heart. The Daily Caller reported. Department of Defense Assistant Dana White tweeted Saturday that her boss, Defense Secretary James Mattis, had joined staff in serving breakfast at the White House on Friday morning. The tweet included a picture of Mattis wearing a suit and tie standing in the back of the house with kitchen staff. White House Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders retweeted White's tweet with the caption that she was one of the lucky ones to see Mattis helping out, adding that the defense secretary had assured me they hadn't let him help cook. Such a great surprise to start the morning with sec. Mattis, Sanders wrote. This is a perfect example of how the secretary is a symbol of humility and empathy, something the former administration has sorely lacked. He has cooked with the White House staff, done his laundry in the basement of the Pentagon, foregone cable news, and even praise service members beneath him at every rank at any chance he gets. Secretary Mattis's actions came shortly after he spoke at the Service Academy graduations this past month, where he had the opportunity to wish the graduating classes good luck in their endeavors as they prepare to enter the armed forces and work on behalf of our country. KKTV reported. The 984 graduates at the Air Force Academy Wednesday got an unedited introduction to the difficult world they now face as new officers. The graduation's keynote speaker, Defense Secretary Jim Mattis, told the group they will see battle soon. And they will be expected to win every fight. Your primary weapon system now is your attitude, Mattis said. That's no surprise to the class of 2018, all of whom have spent the majority of their lives in a nation at war. But having war as a daily backdrop isn't enough to condition troops for how tough those fights can be when you're in the middle of them, Mattis said. Always be ready to fight and win, Mattis said. There is no room for complacency. The class of 2018 had to fight just to make it through four tough years at the academy. When they arrived for basic training, the class was more than 1,200 strong. Over the years, 222 of them dropped out. They're one of the smartest groups ever seen at the academy, making it through one of America's toughest colleges with an average GPA of 3.07. Of the graduates, more than 500 are headed to air crew jobs with 417 set to pilot planes and 69 headed for drones. They're the 60th Academy graduating class and join what graduates call the long blue line of 50,689 graduates. Proud parents pack the stands to cheer for the graduates. Sue and Greg Pike were all smiles Wednesday as their son Ethan Pike left Falcon Stadium as one of the Air Force's newest second lieutenants. He has always wanted to fly, and he has always wanted to serve his country, Sue Pike said. The parents echoed Air Force Secretary Heather Wilson's assertion during the ceremony that no cadet graduates on their own. He is a very independent young man, but we are his support system, Mrs. Spike said. But the parents shied away from taking any credit. He wants to serve his country and make the world a safer place, Mrs. Pike said proudly. He cares about other people. Academy Superintendent Lt. Gen. J. Silveria also gave the newest graduates a vote of confidence, saying they'll be ready to lead on day one. The Air Force's top general, General David Goldfein, told the cadets they'll have to hit the ground running. America has stepped up air campaigns in Syria and Afghanistan in a bid to bomb Islamic State and Taliban insurgents into remission. Many of you will face the ultimate test in war, Goldfein told the class. But the specter of war didn't dim the day for the new lieutenants. It is completely unreal, said 2nd Lieutenant Alicia Newman, who will tackle space operations as her first Air Force job. It feels like a dream she said as the Air Force Thunderbirds flying team screamed overhead. My heart is pounding. Most past speakers have used their academy addresses to focus on wider national policies. Presidents Barack Obama and George W. Bush used the academy podium to roll out foreign policy proposals. Past defense secretaries have used the graduation speech to call for bigger budgets and new weapons. Not Mattis. He focused firmly on the cadets in front of him. Make the Air Force better every day you serve, he told them. That focus got the attention of the graduates. Second Lieutenant Brandy Oliver said she was inspired by the Defense Secretary's speech. He definitely loves America, and he was the perfect speaker. Oliver and her classmates eagerly embraced their new roles after the ceremony, 
quickly replacing their cadet rank with second lieutenant spars before they left Falcon Stadium. Mattis has always been a class act, whether in the kitchen, in the Pentagon, or at a graduation ceremony. The United States is lucky to have him in service to our country and on behalf of the American people. That was the news. We thought you might be interested in knowing about this. Please click like and subscribe. Thank you.